The lawsuits are over. The drama has ended. It's 2020 and Apple and Qualcomm have finally buried their legal hatchets, at least enough to work together on bringing 5G modems to the iPhone 12 this fall. Almost certainly, we think. Look, listen, it's complicated and here's why. Sponsored by Backblaze. I'm Rene Ritchie, and according to YouTube, between 60 and 70% of you still haven't subscribed. So don't miss out on all the in-depth iPhone 12 coverage I have coming your way. Hit that button and bell gizmo right now. Okay, so to understand the iPhone, you need to understand one very important thing about Apple. Okay, a couple of important things, but only one of them really matters right now. Apple is just super conservative when it comes to battery life. Big surprise, right? That might sound hella obvious, but its effects are both subtle and can be extremely frustrating. It means anything that affects the battery life in any way, anything that radiates, light like the display, heat like the chipset, and yeah, radio waves like the radios, cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of them, all of it is just beyond super tightly controlled. It's why once Apple got to Retina, they became far less aggressive about display density and started focusing on the much more energy neutral aspects of display quality. It's why Apple started making their own chipsets so they could balance performance cores with efficiency cores and make the graphics wider instead of just faster. It's why they adopt new Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards so quickly so they can maintain low energy states as much as possible and better race to sleep when it just isn't possible. And by that, I mean transfer as fast as they can and then shut down as fast as they can to save as much power as they can. It's also why Apple is much slower to adopt new cellular standards because the early versions of those modem chips are typically bigger and run hotter on networks that have far less deployment that if hit by hundreds of thousands of iPhones suddenly coming all online all at once would just fall all over like Megatron hit by Optimus Prime in full on truck mode. Now, I know what you're already typing. Why doesn't Apple just make up for the extra power draw by making the iPhone twice as thick and squeezing double the battery cells into it like a jelly donut? And well, that's the second really important thing to understand about Apple. And if you wanna see a video on that, let me know in the comments below. Never mind 5G in 2020. The original iPhone didn't even support 3G in 2007. It used modems by a German company named Infineon Technologies, which spun out of Siemens AG. And all it had to do, its one job at launch, was carry GSM and edge data for AT&T in the US. GSM, or Global System for Mobile Communications, is what most of the world was using at the time. Most of the world, but not Verizon or Sprint in the US. Also, yeah. Bell and TELUS in Canada, but they would eventually switch over to GSM while Verizon and Sprint would decidedly not. Verizon and Sprint used and stuck to CDMA or Code Division Multiple Access. It was a technology that allowed for far fewer towers to cover far more distance and serve far more people. So even though it had a host of its own problems, it's what they went with in order to build their networks out bigger and cheaper. What that meant was, once Apple had sold iPhones to everyone willing or able to use them on AT&T, in order to keep growing, they had to add support for Verizon. That meant adding CDMA, and that meant dealing with Qualcomm. In order for your technology to become part of a standard, you have to agree to license it in a fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory way. That's what's called FRAND. And that means, in theory at least, anyone capable of spinning a chip should be able to license a technology and implement it to spin exactly that kind of chip. That's how we get and preserve competition, in theory. In practice though, Qualcomm had CDMA wrapped up so tightly that there was just no way not to deal with them. And that's why the iPhone 4 variant designed for Verizon, CDMA and eVideo data used a Qualcomm modem. As Apple continued to expand iPhone carriers and eventually went to 4G LTE, those Qualcomm modems were just a huge benefit, not only in terms of performance, but also compatibility. It's how we got the first iPhone that was truly a world phone, in that if you bought it or could get it unlocked, you could use it almost anywhere in the world. But it also came at a huge cost, specifically Qualcomm's huge fees. See. 
Qualcomm considered their modems so important to the success of any phone that they demanded not just a regular fee for the modem, but a fee based on the price of the entire phone. Now, you can just imagine if every important component in a phone wanted to do this, like gotta have a screen, that's a percentage. Wi-Fi, yeah, also a percentage. You wanna be able to plug a cable into it, right? Percentage, processor, oh. Wait, have you seen how much Qualcomm is charging for those now as well? I joke, but if every component vendor acted that way, every manufacturer would just simply run out of percentages before they made a single phone. But Qualcomm does act exactly in that way because they're not mostly or even mainly a modem or chipset company. No, they are mostly and mainly a patent licensing company. That meant Apple was paying those hefty, hefty modem fees, which meant we were paying those hefty, hefty modem fees for them on every iPhone. Yes, even iPhones that weren't and would never be used on CDMA in the US because that's how Qualcomm worked. And Apple, like Sauron, does not share power. I mean profits, profits. So Apple started trying to disentangle themselves from Qualcomm. Now, at around the same time Apple was switching to Qualcomm, Infineon was bought out by Intel, yeah that Intel and became Intel Mobile Communications, IMC. And Apple decided to go back to them. The initial plan was to replace Qualcomm on all the non-CDMA phones. In other words, even in an increasingly LTE world, all the phones that didn't need to still run on Verizon or Sprint's legacy networks in the US. Now, Qualcomm, of course, had a ton of LTE patents as well, and they treated Fran there pretty much how they treated Fran everywhere, in an unfair, unreasonable, and frankly, quite discriminatory way. So Intel and Apple had to work around Qualcomm's patents, at least as best as they could. And that resulted in an iPhone 7 rollout where the GSM iPhones all had Intel modems. That, just as frankly, didn't work quite as well as the CDMA models, the ones that still had Qualcomm modems especially in areas with more obstacles or just weaker signal. But for Apple, that really didn't matter because it meant that they didn't have to pay the exorbitant licensing fees that Qualcomm demanded. That was just what Apple was gonna do. Up to and including the iPhone 11, which was all in on Intel modems with not a tollup of Qualcomm Insight or Insight. Much better Intel modems as well, if still not quite as good as Qualcomm. Now, while Apple and Intel were busy making modems for the iPhone, Apple and Qualcomm were busy trying to sue the pants off each other all over Qualcomm's licensing terms and Apple helping Intel make those modems. Also, 5G was on its way and Qualcomm had gotten every bit the stranglehold over that technology they'd gotten over the ones before, more even. And just as importantly, Qualcomm had a huge lead in terms of actually making the modems that worked on the various kinds of 5G. As Apple and Qualcomm battled it out in the courts, Apple and Intel battled it out in the labs. But in the end, it just became like 100% crystal clear that there was absolutely no freaking way Apple and Intel would be able to deliver a 5G modem anywhere nearly as good as Qualcomm's or anywhere nearly on time, if at all, ever. And that meant Apple needed Qualcomm and Qualcomm still wanted Apple's money and neither really wanted to risk a decision going the other way. So both decided to bury those very large legal hatchets and sign a new deal that would ensure 5G support for the iPhone, just in time for the iPhone 12. Now, the story doesn't just end here. When Intel lost Apple's modem business, they also lost their modem business which is why it came as absolutely no surprise to absolutely anyone when Apple bought that business from Intel shortly after settling with Qualcomm. So now it's Apple's modem business. Of course, the modem is only part of the solution. There's also the RF front end, the antennas and more. Apple already makes their own antennas. Perhaps you remember them from the iPhone 4 and everybody gets a free bumper, but we'll have to wait and see what happens with the RF front end. And Apple didn't just make a deal with Qualcomm for their modems. They made a deal to license the underlying technologies. It's not completely similar to, but it's also not completely dissimilar from the deal Apple made with ARM, where in the beginning, they licensed ARM's designs for chipsets, but later licensed ARM's ISA, their instruction set architecture to make their own chip design. So in a couple or a few years, Apple could have their own custom modems ready for the iPhone 14 or iPhone 15, alongside or part of their custom silicon, the A14 or A15, 
all part of that Qualcomm license. But that's then, this is now, and Apple and Qualcomm are both full steam ahead, just trying to get 5G modems into the iPhone 12 in time for its launch later this year. That could mean Qualcomm's X55 modem, which is what we've seen in recent 5G Android phones. But there have also been some rumors saying if time and yield allows, it could also be the next generation X60 modem, which will be apparently fabricated on TSMC's new five nanometer process, just like Apple's next generation A13 system on a chip. And that would certainly play into Apple's more conservative modem strategy, where they prefer to wait and let other manufacturers and phones suffer with the pain of quirkier, less power efficient, more battery devastating early generation chipsets. And carriers load strategies, where they prefer to keep the huge volumes of iPhone users off next generation networks until they're deployed enough to handle all that added traffic, because no one likes a network when it's continuously being taken down. Like Megatron, by Optimus. Now, I still haven't even touched on the mess that is 5G itself. Sub-6 versus Sub-9, or FR1 versus millimeter wave and FR2, and whether that's even gonna ever be a real commercial technology. So let me know in the comments if you want a video on that as well, especially on how expensive it might all just be. But for now, I'll just say it makes you really, really appreciate how inexpensive Backblaze is. For just $6 a month, you get automatic, unlimited backups for your Mac or PC. No gimmicks, no gotchas. Just all your documents, your music, your photos, your videos, every important piece of business, every irreplaceable memory, all of it, all backed up for just $6 a month. Not like an extra chore or extra work or job for you, but just set Backblaze up and it just goes to work in the background, constantly keeping your data safe. And let's be realistic here, that's the only way that's gonna happen and your data is gonna be kept safe. You can restore your files from anywhere. You can access them via the mobile app, download them directly over the web, or if it's just too much, get them sent to you by mail. You pay for the hard drive, they ship it to you, filled up with all your files, you restore them, and then you can even ship the hard drive back within 30 days to get a refund. Backblaze is currently protecting over an exabyte of customer data. That's like over a billion gigabytes, and they've restored over 50 billion files to date. And you can go to backblaze.com slash Rene Ritchie and test it out and start protecting yourself and your data today. Click on the link in the description or just go to backblaze.com slash Rene Ritchie and sign up for your free 15 day trial. And clicking on that link, really helps out the channel. Thanks Backblaze, thanks to all of you for your support. Check out my iPhone 12 playlist right up there and see you next video.